Last time we looked at a PC cooler air cooler, it was that mix matched heat pipe design. Very, very interesting cooler. Heavy hitter for Intel CPUs. For AMD, not so much, but pretty cool concept. But what if PC cooler tries to be normal for once? This is the RZ 620 from PC cooler, the relatively normal air cooler, considering what these guys are capable of. This puppy exists in black, white, and gray, and we got the black one here today. And for all intents and purposes, this is a pretty much regular air cooler. We got a dual tower design, 158 millimeters high, so not that much. Two clip-mounted 120 millimeter fans, both spinning at up to 2200 RPM and pushing up to 86.73 CFM and up to 3.2 millimeters of H2O. The right one is of course protruding over the RAM, but as these are clip-mounted, you can just mount it higher. Not to mention that the fans are relatively relatively well made with some rubber around the corners. Generally, the 54 Finstack heatsink is mostly black, slightly shortened towards the heat pipes with all black fans, and the top parts of both towers are covered by a matte black grayish plastic plate with an actual black triangle and some orange coloring to give this thing some level of color. In the bottom, we got a copper nickel plated base with six very regularly shaped 6mm heat pipes, so Overall, very regular black air cooler. Looks quite nice, doesn't stand out in any negative way. Everything good so far. If you get one of these, you will get the usual mounting hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets, as well as a max speed controller, or in their words, it's uh, the fan governor. Basically a little switch that reduces the max fan RPM down to 2000 or 1800. If you really want to do that, sure, but you could also just set a proper PVM curve. There is no PVM splitter included, but you won't really need one because both fans have a splitter attached to their cable, so you can still control everything from a single header. To get the cooler going on Intel, we need to take the provided backplate and shove it behind the motherboard. On the other side, take the Intel double-sided screws and screw them in. From there, take the Intel retention brackets, install them top and bottom from the socket with the arrows pointing towards the CPU and screw everything down using the thumb screws. Over on AMD, we need to remove the original retention brackets and replace them with the exact same double-sided screws, that's cool. And then AMD retention brackets, again arrows pointing towards the CPU and screw that one down. From there, on both sockets, add some of the included thermal paste, slap the cooler on top, screw everything down and install the fans. Okay, with that out of the way, let's see how a 6 uni-sized heat pipe cooler from PC Cooler performs. First up is Intel, where we benchmark on top of a 3900K featuring three presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. At 120 watts going through the socket, aka gaming, the RZ620 managed to keep the chip at 34.2 degrees C above ambient. It's not a bad result overall, within the margin of error of a Thermalright Peerless Assassin 120SE, so it's really not bad. But there are better alternatives around, like the Deepcool AK620 or the old Nokia NHD15. On the flip side, of course, there are coolers that are clearly lagging behind. From there, we slowly lower the fan speed and measure the noise and performance along the way to create a noise-to-performance curve. And on that one, we can see that it's close, but just not quite there. It is glued against the Deepcool AK620 and Peerless Assassin, but it's not quite reaching it. And even if we lower the fan speed and thus reduce the noise, the ratio of the ROZ620 never quite reaches the other coolers. Except for the Thermaltake Tough Air 710, and that's a 7 heat pipe cooler, and it's saying much more about that cooler than this one, I'm just saying. Once we pushed the load up to 250 watts, the ROZ620 fell down when looking at the whole graph. At 68.8 degrees C above ambient, it is now on the level of a Scythe Fuma 3, even starting to compete with uh, some smaller direct touch coolers. But it's the noise that concerns me most. On the noise to performance graph, we can unfortunately see that the RZ620 faces some real trouble. Although its max performance or lower workloads isn't bad, once the heat goes up, it lags in both performance and the noise department. Compared to things like the Thermal Right Period Assassin or AK620, it's just not quite there. And it even now lost against the Thermal Right Tough Air 710. And also important to note here, this line never reaches noise floor, something that most other air coolers that we test do at 250. At some point, they reach noise floor, but this one didn't. And for 320 watts, I tried it, but no chance. The RZ620 just can't keep the temperature underneath the 110 degrees C package temperature limit that we set, so it failed on that front. And what about AMD? For Team Red, we use a 7950X3D, 
and we measure the sustained average clock speed across all cores for every 10% of the fan PVM setting to create a noise to performance curve. And it doesn't look better for the ORZ620 when you compare it against the bigger brother. After all, the fan is generally quieter and if you noise normalize both of them, the ORZ620 and A20 can keep up a relatively similar noise to performance graph from start to finish. However, once you throw in other coolers into that mix, it doesn't look as good anymore. I gotta say, I expected more. It's not like this is a bad cooler, or at least on lower workloads it will do a fine job, not amazing in the noise department, but there are worse coolers around. The problem is just it is not amazing if the heat goes up or if you want to keep the noise down. The price makes all of this slightly better. I found this for around 70 USD on Amazon. I couldn't find it in Europe. That's, that's a problem on its own, but, but 70 bucks for a dual tower 6 heat pipe cooler isn't bad. Until you compare that to something like a Thermorite cooler, for example. Uh, let's just take the Peerless Assassin. That then the RZ620 just doesn't cut it anymore. So as for me, if you are really into the design and you are only gaming on, let's say, a Max 14700K 7800X3D, sure, this thing will do. But if you go any higher than that or you, you do anything which is more demanding than just gaming, or you want to keep a very good noise to performance ratio, there are just way better alternatives out there for both just raw performance and price to performance. But okay, this should be everything on the PC Cooler or Z620. And at this point, a huge thank you to PC Cooler for sending it over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to push more money into that research I was talking about in the RZ820 video. We got another one, RZ620. Six heat pipes? Sure. Two could be for two fans, but what does that zero stand for? I, I still don't know. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the RZ820 if you haven't before. That one was an interesting concept. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.